The very first and fundamental job is to make sure the line of the fence is clear of obstructions. Once it is clear, you need to set up a taut line to mark the position of the fence. And the first muscle master stroke make sure that any neighbours are in agreement with the size and location of the fence and any clearance work you're doing too. Now you have to establish where you need to dig the post holes. Use one of the fence rails to mark the position of the centre of each post hole. Make a chalk or pencil mark halfway along that rail, that is, if you're using two posts per rail. Never have the posts more than three metres apart. When you're happy with the preparations and you've established the likelihood of any nearby pipes or services, you can dig the first hole. And another muscle master stroke. Make sure that the spoil you dig out of the hole is far enough away to avoid getting in the way as you work. You'll find it easier to use these double digging spades or shove holers to get to the correct depth. It's important to keep the sides vertical right down to the bottom of the hole. Aim for a hole wide enough to get a minimum of 100 millimetres of concrete around the post. You'll now mark the post to make sure that it's at the right height above ground level. This measurement is the overall height of the fence, less 25 millimetres, as it's usual to have the top of the post that much lower than the top of the fence. If you're fitting a gravel board, make a second mark. This is where the gravel board will come up to on the post from ground level. Mark the depth of the gravel board above the first mark you made on the post. For instance, if you're using a 150mm deep gravel board, just make the new mark 150mm above the first mark. Put the post in the hole and, using a spirit level, make sure it's vertical, that it's just touching the taut line, and it's centred on the chalk mark on the rail. If everything's in line, then start concreting. Once you've put two or three shovelfuls in, compress the concrete with a rammer to expel any trapped air and to give a good bond. Then put in more concrete and ram again, continuing the process until the concrete's approximately 100mm below ground level. Now check the post is still vertical. And here's another muscle master stroke. Remember to check it front to back as well as side to side and make any necessary adjustments. It's important to concrete in the posts at both ends of the fence run 
and at the start and finish of any slope in between. This means that the other posts can be put up to the correct height by eye. You'll find it helpful to put all the bolts in the holes of the concrete posts at this stage. These will support the rails before they're fixed in place. Now make a mark on the rails in line with the post holes, ready for drilling the holes for the bolts. After you've drilled the holes in the rails, you may need to tap the bolts through, after which fit the washers and nuts loosely. Don't tighten them yet in case you need to make adjustments later. And it's exactly the same procedure with the gravel board. Mark the position of the hole and then drill and bolt accordingly. There mustn't masterstroke now about safe and accurate drilling. Put the rail or gravel board on a block on the ground to drill through. Then the gravel board can be bolted to the posts in exactly the same way as you did with the rail.
Continue this process until all the rails and gravel boards have been attached to the posts. And now you can tighten all the bolts with a spanner or socket. Now, at last, you can start boarding the fence. If it doesn't have a gravel board, position the first board at a height of 25mm above the post. The next board goes where the slope starts, if there is one, or at the end of the run. String a taut line across the top of the two boards and begin boarding. Make sure that the boards just touch the taut line. Of course, if you do have gravel boards, you don't need a line as the feather edge boards will sit directly on them. It's best to allow about 25mm overlap of each board. There's no reason why you shouldn't use a nail gun if you've got one. They do save a lot of time and David Musson Fencing can sell you the best nails for them. Every half dozen boards, just check with the spirit level that the boards are still vertical. Here's a final Muss and Master Stroke that really will save you a lot of time. To maintain the correct overlap of the feather edge boards, you can make a spacer, which by its design will guarantee uniform overlaps. The clever bit is to hang it round your neck, unless you're blessed with having three hands. If you use a 125mm wide board and you're having a 25mm overlap, you'll need 10 boards to the metre. So that's it. Your own masterpiece thanks to a Mussen Masterclass.